Welcome back to another episode of the Identity Sports Podcast. Our guest here today is Coda Martin, a former offensive guard in the NFL and the XFL. Uh, I struggled with the, you know, the whole identity piece that a lot of our athletes go through and that continuous process. So we're going to dive in, learn lessons from his career and what God has been teaching us through it all. So Coda, it's a pleasure to have you today. Yeah, great to be here, Zach. It's awesome. Great podcast. Love listening and excited to be a part of it. Yeah, thank you. You know, it's we love hearing the feedback of people listening to the shows and how it's been encouraging people. So it's good to have you as a listener, but then to also have you on the show. Um, so we kind of started a new segment that you may not have you know heard yet with one of the recent ones. So it's our fast facts segment. So I'm going to ask you some quick questions, kind of break the ice, just kind of spout out the answers as they as they come to you. Yeah, let's do it. All right. So one of the first ones that we're going to start with. So what are you most proud of in your career? Huh. Well, my uh, in college, actually, my, my first game is offensive lineman. So I played tight end and defensive end in high school, made the move to O-line in college, thought I'd never get a chance to score a touchdown again. Well, my first game as an offensive lineman in college, I jumped on a fumble in the end zone for a touchdown in Kyle Field. Um, it was their first game under the new construction. So the start of the game, there was like 104,000 fans there. By the time I got in as a backup, I, who, who knows how many people were there, but I scored a <laughs> touchdown as an offensive lineman in college. And uh, man, that was, it was crazy. So it never happened again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that, that's awesome. So, I mean, this is probably, that's probably going to be the one, but I was going to say, if you could relive one moment of your career, what would it be? Yeah. I mean, yeah, I love that. Just I'll just I'll pick a different one so you got something else. But uh, yeah, as far as my pro career, reliving one moment, I, you know, you as a a young athlete, you dream of playing and at the highest level. The majority of my career, I was a backup. You know, I was a a practice squad guy, just a bubble guy, trying to stick around, working hard to just um, to just make it. And I finally got got pulled up for a game and. Um, you know, just, just running out of tunnel for an NFL game and then taking the field for my first NFL snaps. I just remember looking around and being like, man, not many people get to do this, trying to take it in because it's just, it goes by like that. And then, you know, um, you got goals and dreams and visions and, and you work towards those things. And so to have something come to fruition like that was, was a blessing and, mm. um, something that I I've relived in my mind a few times. I'm like, man, that was cool. You know? Yeah. To see all that hard work finally come. I mean, you worked all those years for it, peewee football, high school, all that hard work to, to finally see that and experience that, that that's awesome. Um, what would you say is kind of your go-to cheat meal? <laughs> yeah. I, uh, I love Oreos, man. I I could put away a whole <laughs> sleeve of Oreos like it's a breath of air. Like I'm, I'm just, I'll eat some good Oreos. Not really a meal, but I'll go for yeah. it and eat as many calories as a meal for sure. But, <laughs> yeah, meals, Chick Fil A is, is always a, a fun one, but you can get okay. my healthy at Chick Fil A, I guess. So real cheap. <laughs> yeah, I go Oreo. What? Yeah. yeah, I wouldn't say, well, maybe Oreos isn't, it's not very natural, but it's not the worst one we've heard. Yeah. We, you know, one of our guests earlier, MMA fighter, Anthony Went, you may know him. Yeah. Um, he was saying that he put down a dozen Krispy Kreme donuts. Ooh, that's, so that's, 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 that's going to be hard to beat. Yeah. Yeah. I could put away <laughs> a, a whole of box calories. of pizza by myself and go, like, go to Little Caesars and you know, <laughs> a cheap pizza and yeah. just eat the whole thing but lately yeah really yeah. trying to split that with people we'll see if uh if i can keep that yeah. <laughs> trying to drop some weight down i'm done but yeah so what is your favorite movie favorite movie you know since i was a kid i've loved nacho libre quote nacho libre like crazy <laughs> a lot of good uh good quotes in there love dumb humor so that's that's, that's okay. what i'd say yeah yeah, that's a good one. That's a good Jack Black one. I always love the School of Rock. That's probably my favorite oh, yeah. Jack Black movie. Yeah. Um, just the music and stuff, and that is great. But what would you say is your favorite Bible verse? Favorite Bible verse is Romans eight twenty eight. In all things, God works for the good of those who love Him and have been called according to His purposes. Yeah, I love that. Okay, so to kind of end the segment, what this is kind of to peel the layers back a little bit. What is your greatest fear in life? Yeah, greatest fear, man. I, 
I don't know, just like silly fears. I like, I hate spiders. And like, my wife's terrified of all bugs. So it's my job in our house to kill all the bugs. And she'll holler at me across the house, cricket. And I'll have to run in there and kill a cricket. But when it's a spider, I'm like, extra quick. I'm trying to <laughs> snap the thing. I'm like, man. Yeah. I like, I, I've had nightmares about them crawling in my ear or like, I don't know. So, not to give any nightmares out there that's got arachnophobia. But yeah. Hate him. Hate him. Yeah. Yeah. Well, as long as you face it, I mean, being an offensive lineman, I mean, you're not a tiny guy. So yeah. to be scared, to be scared of spiders, you know? Yeah. Um, but yeah, we've all, we've all got our own. And- you're listening to the Identity Sports Podcast, where we dive into the world of faith, sports, and inspiration with athletes from across the country. I'm your host, Zach Vogel. Are you passionate about giving every student the opportunity to receive a Christian education? At ACSDO, we transform tax credit donations into valuable tuition scholarships, making private Christian education affordable for Arizona families. Join us in our mission to ensure no family ever has to say, we wish we could put our children in a Christian school, but we just can't afford it. With over 25 years of dedication, we've awarded over $346 million in scholarships thanks to the support of generous donors like you. Visit acsdo.com to learn more and make a difference today. ACSDO, because every student deserves a Christian education. Kind of moving on to into your life story, tell us a little bit about your career. I mean, you spent some time in college, you know, with Texas A&M. I think you spent some time at Syracuse. What was kind of like your career and your faith aspect? Kind of intertwine that too for us. Yeah, for sure. So my parents actually met through FCA, the Fellowship of Christian Athletes, and I was raised in a Christian home. So I knew uh, all about the Bible. And when I was in like junior high, early high school, I really wrestled with like, is this really what I believe? Is this just what my parents taught me? And so I asked a lot of deep questions. My mom got me a case for Christ for kids. And, um, I really came to the point where I was like, could atheists be right? But reading that book, I was like, man, the universe is so huge. And the vast, infinite nature of the universe um, to me was like, man, that points to an intelligent designer. It's hard to believe all that came from nothing. And then even on a small scale, you look at uh, molecules, atoms, cells, organelles, tissues, uh, organs, organ systems, organisms, ecosystems. You just keep going up from there and everything is interconnected and interwoven and it all points to an intelligent designer. I believe that the more that we learn about science, the more that it points to a creator. And so from that, and and I've developed that over time, the more that I've learned, but like from, from like science and things like that, I thought it all pointed to intelligent designer. Then I started looking at different religions in like early high school. Like, well, what if all these other kids that are raised in other families with different beliefs, what if they're right? Uh, but when it came down to it, Christianity was way different than most world religions. Every world religion that I looked into was about works. It was works-based. If you can do, 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 do all these things, check all these boxes, then you can go to heaven. Well, Christianity was different. It was about, man, God said, we're not good enough. He gave us the law and we screwed it up. And the Bible says the law shows us how sinful we are. So when I got to college, um, I knew that I was screwed up. I had some problems. I had some things going on. But I had developed this faith where I saw that like Christianity isn't workspace, it's grace space. It's about, man, God loved us so much that he sent his son to live the life we couldn't live and die the death that we deserve. And then he rose from the dead and defeated death and shame and guilt and all these things. And so I had a good foundation of the gospel and the fact that Jesus died for us. And I believe that. And I came to that point in high school. Now getting to college, your faith becomes your own. Now you're free. You're away from your parents a little bit. And so Mm -hmm. I still had struggles with sin where I had to um, find accountability. And FCA was a big part of my faith too, uh, getting involved with with the Fellowship of Christian Athletes, finding Christian friends, Christian guys in the locker room to lean on. My roommate ended up being a guy that loved Jesus. Um, I had uh, my team chaplain mentored me and, and discipled me and, and really poured into me and helped me to fight some of those sins, set up accountability, um, and really live for God. And then I was known in, in the locker room my whole college and NFL career as as big Jesus or the guy that loved Jesus, you know, like I'm an offensive lineman. I got long hair and a beard now. I didn't when I first got to college, but it was a big part of my identity. Everybody knew me as the guy that loved Jesus. And so with that came a lot of like, man, 
I'm known as this dude that loves Jesus. I really got to live it. You know, it, it held me accountable, helped me do a higher standard. And, and I really, I really do love Jesus. I really do want to represent him well and didn't want to ruin my witness by doing things that, that I believe didn't align with what the Bible said. Um, and so sometimes that made me a little bit different. You know, I wasn't always going to the parties and then I got to where I was like, all right, I'll go. I'll just hang out with the guys. But I, I, um, I definitely was a little bit different. I had to have some different friends, but I believe that my joy was so full with my relationship with God. And so that was kind of my, my college journey and, and early uh, NFL journeys is, is I was a part of a lot of Bible studies and, and my, my fun, my community came from Christian environments like that a lot of times and my friends and um, wouldn't regret it for a single day. It was awesome. So, yeah. That's cool. I mean, sometimes you hear people coming to Christ just through, you know, different things or a church service, but like to actually like explore your faith like you did, like that's got to be, you know, very deeply rooted. I mean, you you kind of looked at Christianity and you tested it. You you compared it with everything else and you're exactly right. I mean, it's that grace base that yeah. you're accepting that, hey, you, there's nothing that you can do in this life to earn it, yeah. but God sent his son to bridge the gap between us and, and him. Yeah. And there's just so much freedom that comes with that and that freedom to live your life and to, and to walk in that. And especially on the football field, I mean, sports can be anxiety ridden as fun as they are. I mean, walking into those packed stadiums on Saturday and on Sunday and trying to be a bubble guy on the practice squad, there's so much anxiety and stress that comes with it. How do you feel like your faith and that freedom impacted the way you performed on the field, but then even the way that you said, you know, guys would look at you when they say, here's a bubble guy, he's supposed to be stressed out of his mind, but they could notice a difference. Speak to that a little bit. Yeah, for sure. Um, and I didn't do it perfectly. You know, I've, I've wrestled with anxiety <laughs> and I've fought through that and had to remind myself of a lot of the promises in the scripture. Um, but I do, I do think that you know, there were times when, when I played angry, I like tried to use my anger to play better. And then I got to a point where I was like, I'm like out of control. It's not good. Mm -hmm. My anxiety is not helping. It's making me rigid and tense. And so, um, I had to kind of give that to God. I kind of had to surrender that and just be like, man, God, everything's unstable. I could get cut at any moment. And I was cut a lot. I mean, I if you can go look at my transactions. I tried to count them the other day, but they're a little bit confusing. <laughs> so I'll get, I'll get cut from the roster at the end of the season, picked up back on practice squads, stick around, cut for a week, brought back, cut for a month, brought back. It, and it's just like with the Cardinals, one year I was cut probably four or five times in one season and not picked up anywhere else. Went to a couple of tryouts, but kept coming back to the Cardinals. And <laughs> I like just the anxiety from that and the frustration yeah. with that. I'm just like, man, I'm I'm working with all I got to be the very best that I can be. And I have these gifts, these talents, these abilities. God made me big for a reason. I'm trying to use them for his glory and to have fun with it. And um, it can be stressful for sure. But I remember getting to a point where my wife was just like, I, I got back. They re-signed me back and I went back and it was just more practice squad. And after a while, I was like, man, I'm still not able to like work up to playing like I want to play. And my, I was just frustrated. My wife was like, well, what do you want? Like, why are you so down? Like, what would you get that would make you satisfied? And I was just like, it was kind of convicting. It was like, man, mm -hmm. I know that my identity is in Jesus, that I, that I should be satisfied with that and he didn't call us to be complacent he wants us to work hard but my all my hope all my joy all my peace all my satisfaction doesn't come from the fact that i'm achieving these goals that i'm setting for myself it comes from the fact that i'm a child of god and so i try to just let go and just say i'm going to work hard you know i'm going to get after it and do everything i possibly can but if these goals aren't reached i don't have to hang my head and, and believe that i'm less than god loved me so much that he died for me you know and so I think that I played better from a, a point of peace when I really let go and tried to just um, surrender and, and trust God with, with all the stuff that's outside my control. I played much better and was able to kind of let go of that anxiety when I just threw that stuff to God, the stuff I, ca I can't control, I can't really um, change and just did my part uh, to be faithful and continue to show up and trust the process. You know what I mean? I, I feel like I played a lot better with the peace that, that God gives than I did 
with the anxiety or playing from anger or these other ways that we, we might try to play better from uh, with with God. I was much more relaxed and calm and steady and level headed and, and just the process was much smoother for me and my faith sustained me through all that. So Yeah, you're playing from victory, right? Yeah. So no matter what happens on the field, you know, Jesus still you're saved. Jesus died on the cross to forgive your sins. Jesus wins the battle. Hmm. Um so yeah, you're you're playing from that from victory and that confidence and that freedom side. But it it's cool to hear that. I mean, especially getting cut, you know, about four different times with the same organization. Then they bring you back. I mean, at that point, you're wondering like, if I look at the coach wrong, am I on? Am I gone the next day too? Like yeah. all those thoughts can creep up in your mind. And so, um, was that where kind of like Romans eight twenty eight? You know, what verses were kind of just what was God speaking into your life during that time to? validate that yeah for sure romans 8 28 is always one that i leaned on um and just just looking at i don't know the character of god in the bible when you read the bible as a whole you see a lot even now still i've i've been reading a lot um i had a back injury so i was reading about like suffering and different things and you look at job or you look at different characters through the bible that suffer uh, David cries out in the laments and all the Psalms, like people that really cry out to God about stuff that hurts, stuff that sucks, stuff that's not easy. Life is hard. Um, but but God continues to be good. And he knows way more than we know. His ways are higher than our ways. His thoughts are higher than our thoughts. And we can trust that he has a good plan. He, he's got it all figured out. And um, even when it doesn't make sense to us, we can trust that he's good, that he loves us, that he's just, that he's... Um, merciful and loving and faithful and so it just just those things i think encouraged me but but romans eight twenty eight was awesome that in all things god works for the good of those who love him I'm like man i love you lord keep working keep working because it doesn't feel like it sometimes but uh you know he uh he sure is good and and my my journey and my story i enjoyed the process and grew through it you know a lot of times we grow through those times that aren't easy and um, continuing to grow and to trust them. So, yeah, yeah, that, that's, that, that's good. So what was kind of like, I mean, for the, the people that don't get to experience the NFL, the ins and outs, even through the practice squad, but then, you know, walking out on a Sunday or, you know, maybe it was a Thursday game, but what is kind of the faith aspect like in an NFL locker room? Yeah, for sure. A lot of the times, so there's a couple different things that are usually in place. There's normally uh, a chaplain there. So a guy that's either on staff with the team, sometimes it's the director of player engagement or a, a local pastor or FCA staff person or somebody like that, that they'll bring in once a week or twice a week, once a week for Bible study. Usually midweek, we would have a Bible study. Um, and Pastor Dara Morrison was our pastor uh, for a little bit. We had another one named Travis Hearn that, that did a good job and, um, another guy named Anthony Edwards, actually. So that was all with the Cardinals in three years. And then I had a, another, uh, couple guys with the saints that were brothers that, that service there and, uh, the chargers, I was only there for a little bit, but every team had, had somebody that would come in and serve the team and, and pour into the team, lead Bible studies, uh, during the season. And then right before the games, we would have a pregame chapel as most sports have, um, at the higher levels, you know, college and pros, there's usually somebody that's a resource that pours into these these teams. And so I would go to that, kind of get to know some of the guys that, that were invested, that wanted to grow, that that were able to take the time to do that. And as as athletes, there's a lot going on, especially if you got injuries, you got to be in the training room, you got to do this, you got to do that. We're training, we're eating, we're meeting, we're doing all these things, but there's usually a set aside time where you have that. And so I was a part of those and really, Love that. Love getting to know the guys that love the Lord. And then from there, we'd talk to some of those guys. And if there were times when we didn't have anything going on in the off season or something, I I got to start a couple of Bible studies. I hosted a couple of Bible studies in my house with a few of my teammates. Um, and so just like really trying to invest in that piece. We talk about using our platform a lot. That's a big way that we can use our platform. We can show up and pour into the guys around us. And I was sharpened by their faith. You know, there was a lot of guys that had been – in a longer NFL journey than I had, or a shorter one that had a strong faith that was like, man, that's encouraging, like to hear people's stories and 
all over the map, where people grew up, where people came from, all the, the highs and lows of their athletic journey. I grew a lot through those times. Um, and then those chaplains also uh, did a great job of just leading us through the word and helping us to learn and to grow. And so I, uh, I enjoyed that, that piece of, of being an athlete for sure. Yeah. Those chaplains, they're, they're in the trenches with you guys. They really pour in and dedicate, you know, time away from their families and stuff to make sure that you guys are cared for it. And it's cool to hear that the NFL teams are making it a priority that they're, you know, with all these trainings and, you know, what you were saying with like physical therapy, all these different things that you have going on, that you guys take the time to make that a priority. And as busy as athletes lives are, you know, when you transition out of sport, Sometimes you feel like, okay, maybe it should be a lot easier now for me to make that a priority and set up a place for that time. But there's always something that our sinful nature tries to fill that time with to make it seem like we're distracted and so busy to where we can't take that time to dive into the word and hear from God. As you've made that transition, what have you found with that? You know, how have you continued to make that a priority in your life? Yeah, for sure. I mean, the Bible is really clear that we're, we're called to live in community. We're called to sharpen one another. Iron sharpens iron. And so uh, just being involved with the local church, finding friends and, and getting plugged into small groups. Um, but kind of on the flip side of that, I've been volunteering as a chaplain. I've spoke at two different high schools in the last couple of weeks. Um, I'm getting the opportunity to speak with NAU with their pregame chapels. Um, I'm praying about going on staff with FCA. Like I really, yeah. I love that aspect of getting poured into. And so I'm trying to um, like, like let it come full circle and pour into people that may be my career. And so I'm praying about that. Um, but, but even myself, I still need people to pour into me. And so me and my wife have a lot of good, good friends from our church. And we, we had a joined a community uh, young marrieds or just marriage community with a lot of couples that were kind of in our similar stage of life and still really close with a lot of those people. And now that we've had kids, we, we haven't been able to go to those, but still going to church and, and hanging out with some of those friends from time to time. And, um, and you know, as, as life slows down and those phases happen, we want to get back involved in those ways and, and continue to grow and find ways to be a part of the local church. And um, man, that's, that's, how God designed it to work. He sent out his disciples to set up churches, to, to make disciples and to really grow. And yeah. so to try to, I try to always have somebody pouring into me and somebody that I can pour into too. So still in touch with my uh, student pastor from growing up, Brandon Kennard. He does an awesome job of uh, being consistent and calling me and reaching out to me, making sure I'm good. And then uh, I have a couple guys that, that I love um, from my church that, that actually asked me to, um, to be in, in community with them, either like mentor, disciple them or be accountability partners with. And so um, have enjoyed that process too. And if that's how God works, you know, it's important. So. Yeah. I love that. We mentioned earlier a little bit about the identity piece and obviously, you know, identity sports, that's a big thing to us is trying to teach athletes to find their identity in Christ and not the sport or what they do for a living. Um, because it could be so hard when injuries come or challenges come, if your identity is rooted in something that could be gained or lost, you know, there's so much trials and tribulations and frustration that can come with that from going from almost sometimes battling of finding your identity as a football player, but now you're, you know, your identity is rooted in Christ to now going outside of that, where your community and your life no longer is founded in football. Your day to day doesn't revolve around football. Now has, has that identity journey been easier for you? Is it still something that you find like you struggle with? Yeah, for sure. It's definitely, I, it's definitely a struggle. And I felt like I knew that all through my, my career. And, and I've heard that time and time again of your identity is not in your sport. Your identity is in the fact that you're a child of God. Your identity is in um, these verses that we read about uh, being children of God, being adopted in, being loved and, and chosen and all these things that the Bible teaches and that I believe are true. Um, but it, it's it's one thing to say it, it's another thing to walk it out. And so football ends and, and it's just like, man, that's all I've really known. That's all that I've worked towards my whole life. That's all people have known me for, I feel like. And so Mm. to kind of try to let go of that is, is tough and is hard. And, um, I look back on those times and some of the most joy that I had was getting to talk to teammates about my faith, about 
man, this is where my joy is. Some of my worst practices, guys would like want to talk to me about God, ask questions, and then I'd end up in these conversations in the locker room that I was just like, man, this is cool. Like I would just have this joy. And so um, from this process of just like, I've been, I had a back injury. I was, I was on the floor for like a month and I was laying there just suffering, depressed, honestly. I just had a newborn baby. My wife was doing it all on her own and I was just struggling. And so in that time, I prayed a lot. I cried out to God and I've, I've finally ended up getting a surgery. Um, feel much better now, uh, but I'm still like, I, I didn't fully get to, to process all that, to grieve like, man, football is done. Like I'm, I'm not going to get another call. Um, God could do it if you wanted to, but I'm, I'm so injured and I've, I've stopped training. Like, like I'm trying to go back that I'm like, if I got a call, I, I wouldn't even go back. I'm done. I'm really trying to let go of that and go get a real mm -hmm. job. And, and, uh, I believe that that's what God's called me to and what, what I think is, is happening. Um, but it's still tough because I've just, my whole life I've, I've had all these goals and these dreams and I, I haven't really missed many weeks uh, of lifting weights and of training. And now all of a sudden I was on the, on the floor for a month, sleeping on the floor, barely able to walk, just frustrated and, and upset. And I was able to just kind of give that to God and just be like, God, I trust you. Help me to let go of all that. And it's a process and, and uh, depression comes back a little bit. I actually started seeing a therapist. Uh, I think that there's health, healthy stuff there. Um, but yeah. always to balance that with the truth of God's word. And like, what does the Bible say? And, and how, how can I really lean on the truth of what the Bible says that I, who the Bible says that I am? Um, and so just having to continue to remind myself of my identity and, um, and God's got good plans. And, you know, I, I was working out for the first time since that back injury, um, for the first time in months, uh, I was in the gym last week and, I was on the treadmill listening to an Andy Mineo song uh, called I Ain't Done. And I was just like, it was like, I ain't done. And I was like, I kind of am done. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I just, it wasn't fun to hear at first. And I just made me sad a little bit. And then I was like, what is this really talking about, though? It's talking about our faith. And it's talking about, like, our walk with God. And then I started thinking about it. I'm like, man, the mission is still the same. My job is going to change. Uh, what I do, what people might see me as might change, but I'm not done um, with with God's calling to glorify him, to bring people to him, to, to share my faith, to make disciples of all nations, to like to do the great commission, to really go out and love God and love people like that never changes. God never changes. And he's called us to do these things regardless of what our job is. And so then I was just encouraged, like, man, I'm not done. I'm still a child of God. I still got a mission and a vision to go out and, and make disciples to, to impact people's lives for the Lord because that's what's important. And so I'm encouraged by that. And, and that's kind of helped me to, to overcome it a little bit. Like I said, it's still a struggle. There's still a little bit of that, man, but I love football, you know, so I got to, I got to, and, and that's okay. I, I just got to find a healthy way to still enjoy it, still be around it and be okay with like, yeah man, I enjoyed it while I could play and my, my time's come to an end. So now I got to, um, one of, one of my other verses that I really like is talks. I don't even know the reference off the top of my head, but it talks about how, um, he who began a good work and you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. And so God is going to continue to work on me and my soul and my heart and my life to where I can pour out uh, to other people and I can be full of his joy for myself. Um, no matter what I'm doing for a job, uh, and no matter the fact that my career's done, uh, my joy comes from him, and he's going to continue to carry my my soul onto completion till the day of Christ Jesus, till the day that Jesus comes back, or till I die and and get to go be with him in heaven. So, um, I'm so thankful for that. Amen. Yeah, that <laughs> that's awesome. I mean. It, you're exactly right. I mean, just because your sport journey ends doesn't mean that you still don't have a calling on your life. You're now moving into that next phase. You know, you're, God's going to keep revealing to you all the lessons that he, hey, I needed you to walk through this football battle, this football journey, so that you can now be a better, more effective dad, a more effective um, pastor, whatever it, that next phase looks like as you're praying through that he needed to take you through all those journeys and those hardships that he did. And so for you to recognize that, Hey, God's not done with you. 
you're just on to, you know, Coda 2.0 or 3.0. You're on the next phase yeah. of being a vessel for God and he's going, going to use you. Hmm. And so it's co- so cool to hear those stories. Um, and man, we're praying for you in these next steps too. I know the the transition out of sport, it's very real to you. You're in the middle of it now. It's a, it's a challenge. And I love your vulnerability and being able to share with the, the people listening is sometimes I feel like the enemy tries to get a hold on us and says that, you know, you're alone in this. No one else has gone through this before. Hmm. And so we try to wall up and we don't share and we just, we hold it in. Um, but to be open and honest, you know, you find that so many other people around us have gone through the same thing. And then you can pour those wisdom, just like you were saying, you always make sure you have someone pouring into you and you're pouring into someone else. Hmm. You can share those things and realize, you know, there's really nothing under no, there's nothing new under the sun yeah. and God knows what you're doing with, and he will provide a way for you to get through that. Um, and so that's just the encouragement to you. I know, you know, all those things, but that's the thing. I mean, we know we have the Bible, we have the roadmap in front of us. We know all these things, but sometimes it doesn't always click and we need to continue to, um, to dive in and it may click one day. And then, you know, tomorrow you may struggle. <laughs> you may be one step back again. Um, but that's the beauty of knowing that grace is sufficient for us. You know, we, we're never going to be perfect, but we can continue to live and strive to be better and strive to be more like Christ. Um, but the, at the end of the day, you know, we can't, we're not going to lose our salvation. We're going to continue to love God and work into that. Mm, so absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. I know, I know you're on some time constraints here. We got the, the kiddos about to wake up, but thank you so much for joining us today and pouring into that wisdom. You know, if there's, there's been so many good stuff already, but if you were going to give kind of, how can the the listeners, you know, one thing we want this show to be about is one people can listen and get encouragement from your walk and your faith with Christ and your journey through sport. But we also want to build a community of believers where we can pray for those guys, whether they're still playing or just in transitions as well. How can we as listeners and viewers be the body of Christ Mm -hmm. and come alongside you in your journey and pray for you and your family? Yeah, absolutely. I love that. Um, Prayer is powerful. And so I'll take all the prayers I can get for sure. Um, Pray, pray just that just that God's will is done, you know, and it's, in a lot of ways, it is like he's he's in control. He's sovereign. He's going to get done what he's going to get done. But at the same time, we're called to live for his will and to make the decisions that are right to, to fight temptation, to stay away from sin. Um, you know, but but I, I like praying a lot about direction and what, what should happen next. You know, it, and, you know, there's a lot that goes into that. Like, should I move my family? Should I stay here? Should I get this job? Should I get that job? And so. Um, just that God would give, uh, me direction and, and, you know, that I would be able to just continue to love God and love people with all my heart, mind, soul, and strength and, uh, and love my neighbor as myself. You know, I really want to love God and love people the way that God calls us to. And I can do that in a lot of different ways. And there's a lot of freedom there, but, um, man, there's, there's a lot of different opportunities that I could pursue. So just pray for direction and, um, Man, that's that's awesome. Thanks for for asking. Yeah, well, let me go ahead and pray for us, and then we'll uh, we'll let you part. <laughs> Thanks, dearly Father. Thank you for this day. Thank you for our time here with Coda, God, and thank you for what you're doing in him and his family's life, and um, just the encouragement that he is to myself, and I know the encouragement that he's going to be to all those listening. Uh, pray that they'll. Um, continue to find courage and encouragement through what he's doing. And just for this next phase of life, God, that you will speak through them and just kind of guide them in the direction that you want them to go, whether it not be, uh, you know, audible or however you choose to reveal that God, just for Coda and his family to be confident that they're walking in your will and they're walking in the way that you have already prepared for them. Hmm. And that's the beauty of it. You know where they're going to go and you've, you've prepared the way for them. Um, Pray that you'll give them just guidance and comfort and, you know, calm any nerves or anxiety as it, as you know, they may walk through this and it could be a big decision, but that you'll just give them the peace beyond all understanding. Um, thank you for this show and the chance just to, to meet people like Coda and to be able to highlight their faith and what you're doing through sport. I would pray this all in your name. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Zach. Love it. You're listening to the Identity Sports Podcast, where we dive into the world of faith, sports, and inspiration with athletes from across the country. I'm your host, Zach Vogel.